No, our Kickstarter that I launched Wednesday is now over 25 times funded and is well over double every single stretch goal we set. That means everyone who backed it is going to be getting the gilded edges. It's gonna be getting the thicker, better paper. These bookmarks went gangbusters and thank you so much everyone who tuned in for the announcement video and made my next book announcement feel so special. It means the world. We're given to charity not once, but twice. And the fact that even the smaller project at the beginning is not gonna be an insubstantial amount is just so cool. So I just wanted to start this fantasy news by saying thank you so much. I try not to get emotional on camera, but it, it's really awesome to see my audience turn up and support me, support good causes. I love you. And on top of that, yeah, the counterclaim is not only one in my favor, but my Uzumaki Halloween special is picked up in the algorithm again and is getting views. And that was the hardest video I had ever made. And the fact that it's getting attention again, just... It's been a really good birthday week. Yes, I'm wearing my Berserk shirt to celebrate the fact that we get to return to Berserk. <clears throat> and I am so excited to continue celebrating all these announcements with you Saturday during my seven hour live stream from noon to 7 p.m. EST. Swing by, we'll be signing all those bookmarks y'all are making fly out the door and I'll be answering whatever questions, having friends swing by, other YouTubers. It's gonna be a blast. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the fantasy news. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host who's looking forward to having to sign that many things. My hand might actually fall off Daniel Green. And today, we actually have a surprising amount of fantasy news to get through. Because I thought with having just done a Fantasy News Monday, there wasn't going to be any really big stories dropping. I was wrong. And with the last story we're covering today, I am eating my own words hoard. But we're going to first kick it off with the fact that Apple TV Plus is going to be apparently adapting another sci-fi classic. They weren't satisfied with Jess Asimov's foundation, and apparently they're also taking on William Gibson's Neuromancer. And they're already casting with intent for a season two and three, it seems. I would guess that means Neuromancer is going to be covered in season one, and depending on how it's received, they could pivot to either do a seasons two, three, and four to adapt Count Zero, Mona Lisa over drive and burning chrome all into their own seasons, or if it doesn't do too hot, condense those three into the two. And I am really interested in seeing this adapted well. We've known for a while that something was in the works for a Neuromancer adaptation, and Apple handling it is curious. What's the book about? Critiquing what we're contributing to. Who better to tell it than us then? And what it did for the cyberpunk genre is incredible. We would not have Cyberpunk 2077 without it, and I wouldn't have just written A Witch's Sin, the first book in Neon Ghost. ALWAYS BE PLUGGED! And I have read each book, and I think they're actually pretty much all worth adapting. You could have some leniency with the story here and there, update it in some ways, but also William Gibson's story is aged remarkably well, in my opinion. It needs to be updated socially in some ways, but aside from that, yeah, let's do it. Miles Teller is apparently being looked at to lead the project. I feel Miles Teller about that. And fortunately, yes, Gibson himself, who I didn't know was still alive, is also going to be involved with the project. And Graham Rowland, who you might know from Lost or Jack Ryan, is one of the writers already. So on a scale of hype for like 10 being like super pumped no matter what, and one being like, I really could not give a shit less about that show, I'm sitting at like a solid six. I'll definitely give it a try, and I see the potential for it to be something really cool. Am I gonna bet money it's gonna be a perfect show? No. And in exciting news for Magic the Gathering fans, apparently artwork from the legendary Frank Frenzetta is coming to the game. And I looked at some of the art and thought, that looks like some iconic art I've seen similar to Malice and stuff. That was meant as a compliment, not an accusation. But I'm more covering this to talk about the fact that since I first covered that Magic the Gathering story in the last Fantasy News, I've not only had you guys educate me exceptionally well on what exactly went wrong and why Hasbro is screwing up the Magic the Gathering fan base, essentially, like at financial 
financially, literally, to people who invested in cars in the hope that their, like, growth of value would be something they could rely on. But also, the story has blown up and is getting coverage everywhere from, like, mainstream news to Philip DeFranco. So I'm actually hopeful at this point for Magic the Gathering fans that we could see some kind of correction, of course, from Hasbro, because if you start hitting them with their wallet, you start hitting them in the PR, that's when companies actually care and possibly correct course. I'm on your side, Magic fans. I may not be one of the players, but I'm rooting for you to not have your game continue to be boned for the people who have supported and been a fan of the game the most. And then for this next story, we're going to talk about... <laughs> You know how I said like a scale from 1 to 10 of hype? A show that I'm like bouncing from the floor to the ceiling on, not sure how to feel about. And that is because it has been said that the upcoming Fallout TV show over at Amazon Prime is not going to be quote, rehashing a story from the games, but instead inventing its own, just taking place in the same world. And I don't think that's the wrong call here. Some of the Fallout games have had pretty good stories, but whether or not they're able to translate medium is a whole other debate. Especially Especially with how structured they are for side quests and the main quest not being that girthy, certainly not enough to sustain several seasons, it could be the right call. I am not a big enough Fallout fan to say that with confidence though, I'm not gonna lie to you here. I think I've played three of the games all the way through, but none of the stories are what stuck out to me. It's the world. Please don't be another Halo situation because you can change stories, especially when it comes to video games. What's important is you keep like the themes, the heart, the soul of what made the story resonate with people when making those changes. But when I see the cast, I get excited again. How can I not when you have Walton Goggins, Ella Purnell, Kyle freaking McLachlan, who is responsible for me trying coffee at far too young of age, reference. Damn, All people who I think coffee. are great picks to potentially lead a Fallout show, but then you remember, it's an Amazon show. Oh boy. I can't even put a number for the hype for the Fallout show, so for this, I'm just gonna go hopeful out of 10. But bouncing away from the negative, let's talk about some positive. Because after the success of his stop motion animation Pinocchio adaptation, apparently Guillermo del Toro is pushing once again to try and adapt Mountains of Madness, here's the exciting part, with Phil Tippett attached, the mad god himself. Full context here, Phil Tippett spent years of his life working on a stop motion animation masterpiece where you may not love it narratively, but from an artistic perspective, you have to appreciate it called Mad God, that is just this incredible horror display of what stop motion animation can still bring to the table. And Guillermo del Toro has wanted to make the cosmic horror Mountains of Madness for a long time. So this pairing seems like a dream matchup for a story that I could see being interesting in stop motion animation. And so yeah, like let's fucking do it. It'd be fun, it'd be weird, it'd be horrific, let's go. And I'm willing to admit that stop motion animation isn't like my favorite medium to watch, but I do respect the hell out of the artistry for it, especially watching something like Mad God. I'm not necessarily sitting there for like the story. I'm sitting there just to be amazed at how much effort, dedication an artist put into creating a masterpiece like that. And then we got a piece of Portal 3 news. I'm not going to put in the thumbnail or title, not going to clickbait anybody with this. I want to really avoid it and specifically just read the actual words from the interview because one of the original writers in the first two Portal games has said, yeah, Jay and I have an idea that we think is pretty awesome for a Portal 3. What would happen, generally speaking, we don't have a script or any details worked out, but we have sort of a starting point that we like a ton. So, you know, it's good when you have this idea, but there's a lot left to do. Someone's got to think up some new Portal puzzles, but we do have an actual idea. Yes. But again, us having the idea versus actually committing to making a game is a way different thing. It's not unknown, but there's no formal pitch process at Valve either. It's always kind of a, you know, grassroots campaign, I guess. That is very cool. But let's go ahead and jump on over to a piece of quickie news because we already knew that Adar had been recast in Rings of Power even before the show came out. I don't think we ever got specific reasons, so I would think it's something personal with the actor. That's typically when you don't learn is when like, okay, it's just something in their personal life. But that role has been recast and filled by Sam Hazeldine. I looked into his resume and unfortunately, I haven't seen any of the projects he's attached to. That's why this is quickie news. I just gotta say, that's the actor. But now it is time for me to eat my own work words because I think it was either in a live stream or a video, I can't remember which, I specifically said the reason I hadn't covered the Wednesday trailer was I just didn't think it was going to get a lot of attention, it seemed like something that could be kind of a cult hit to the Addams Family fans, but it wouldn't be on like the mainstream success level. 
oopsie. Because the Wednesday show on Netflix has broken Netflix's English viewership records, garnering more watch time in a week than even Netflix's Stranger Things. With 341.2 million hours watched. Holy sh**. But after looking at the reviews from critics and audience alike, it seems to be that this is just scratching an itch that a lot of people had that the market hadn't filled for quite some time. Combine that with Tim Burton's flair for style, and you're gonna stick out from the crowd essentially for free, because no, it's not directed by him, but he's involved. And I'm happy to see its success, especially for the Adams Family fans out there. But this has just been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Thank you everyone once again for supporting my Kickstarter and being as excited as I apparently am for my next books. Like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Kickstarter if you'd like to support what I do here. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.